Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gentle Dog Trainers channel. I'm your host Olivia De Santos and today we are talking about dogs and children. Now on the channel we've been doing a little series specifically aimed at first time dog owners. Are you ready for a dog? Should you buy or rescue a dog? How to prepare your home to bring home a puppy and how to bring home an adult dog and also how to choose a puppy and how to choose a rescue dog. So all of these videos are linked in the description box down below. I'll also be sprinkling them throughout in the iCards above here and the full playlist for first time dog owners are linked in the description box down below too. But today we are going to be focusing on dogs and children specifically. So if you have young children or if you're expecting a child, is it a good idea to get a puppy or an adult dog? How could they fit into your life? Are there things that you need to know about dogs and children? And specifically, we're going to be covering all of that goodness today. But first, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you want to raise happy, healthy and well-behaved dogs. We publish videos every week about dog gear, dog training, dog nutrition and specific advice for first time dog owners like this one. So click that little notification bell so that you never miss an upload and let's dive into the topic of dogs and children. So if you're googling this question then you're probably wondering is it safe for you to bring a dog into your child's life? Is it safe to have a dog around a newborn for example? And the truth is incredibly complex and quite nuanced it's kind of like yes and no. Of course there are certain dog breeds that are better with children than others and I really encourage you to do your research about this because it's not necessarily the dogs that you might think. So for example, I'm working on a video about why certain dog breeds are banned as part of this series of finding a dog for you. In my research, I learned that pit bulls actual pit bulls uh, were once considered nanny dogs because they are wonderful with children and that might shock you because they're meant to be these dangerous scary dogs that we all have you know these huge preconceived notions about but a pit bull that is raised in a loving caring home is naturally a very loving and caring dog they're very friendly they're very warm and they love children <laughs> they love love children so it's really interesting to see the dogs that are not considered baby friendly and not considered children friendly um, and the ones that are and you know how that and how those preconceived notions can be broken down so I know that it's difficult when you're doing your research when all of these things come up about these dogs not being good with children um, but I do encourage you to really dive deep into the breed if you know the breed so if it's a rescue dog then it might be more complicated but if you know the breed or you know the mix of breeds uh, really dive into your readings as to how suitable they are with children. Um, some dogs are wonderful with newborns, some dogs are absolutely fabulous with newborns. The only thing that I would say about dogs and newborns is that if this is your first dog and if this is your first baby, um, that's a lot to handle at once. It really, really is. I'm not, I'm not a mother, um, but I have been close to many mothers before. And if you are a first time parent, I really would recommend just pouring as much into your baby and not thinking about acclimatizing a puppy and acclimatizing a dog into your life until you are feeling really secure and stable in your motherhood. But that's just my personal recommendation. I just think that it's a lot to bring in a new dog or a new puppy as well as a new baby. So you may find a dog breed that is advertised, let's say, as like a great companion for kids. So let's take a retriever like Blue. Blue is a retriever, she's a flat-coated retriever 
um, and she is wonderful with children. She's very, very emotionally intelligent. She's always been that way. So Blue had always had that, you know, that awareness that you need to be gentle and soft with babies. Not all dogs have that, and certain breeds are better at that than others. Retrievers are a great example. So let's say you are about to bring home a retriever, a retriever puppy or an adult dog, an adult retriever um, with your children. Now, let's talk about puppies first because puppies are very interesting. Puppies have not really been socialized yet, right? You are going to socialize them as part of the process and your children are a really key part of the, your puppy's education as it is. You know, you're educating your children at the same time as you're educating your puppy. So there's a bit of mutual training going on here. So one of the things that you need to make sure is that your children learn to be gentle. Uh, one of the key mistakes we make as young humans is just being a bit heavy handed. Um, so when they pat the puppy or pat a dog, um, they need to be gentle. They need to have a soft hand because if they end up hitting a dog, but we're talking about puppies now. So if they end up hitting a puppy, a puppy might retaliate because the puppy has not been socialized either. So because the puppy has not been socialized yet, they will retaliate by either being like super playful and boisterous or um, they might bite, they might lash out and you want to avoid this as much as possible. So it's really important that your children are educated as to how to approach a dog. It's important they also know that puppies need a break too. Um, even though puppies have a lot more energy than a lot of older dogs, for example, um, puppies need a break. Um, they don't want to be woken up and poked. Uh, they don't want to be disturbed when they're eating. So when a child does wake up a puppy or disturb a puppy while they're eating or pull their tail and things like that when they're just not not in the mood for it. Um, as I say, a puppy who is still learning the social norms of being a dog um, might retaliate. So it's really important that you're training on both sides. Now let's talk about adult dogs. So adult dogs usually have been socialized. Um, you can see the history of your rescue dog with the people at the shelter, see if they've lived with children before, um, see what their experiences were with introducing a child to the rescue dog, um, and make sure that you introduce your children to the rescue dog before you bring the rescue dog home. It's really important that everyone, the whole family, gets on with the dog before you bring them home. But once they have, you've brought them home, it's really important to recognize that rescue dogs have been through a lot. Even if they came from a really loving household and maybe unfortunately their owner has died or they've moved away, moved countries, things like that. Um, the whole process of being kept in a shelter and then integrating into a new home is still quite a traumatic one, like you need to give them some grace. So it's really important that when it comes to your children that they also understand that space, that the adult dog will need some space to acclimatize. They don't want to be, they don't want to play all of the time. Um, they need some sacred space to themselves. So maybe that's a crate or a kennel or something like that, that is filled with toys and soft blankets and just a really nice soothing atmosphere for your dog to kind of retreat and rest. And teaching your children that it's okay for the dog to retreat sometimes. And that it's important to give them their space when they need that space. Still need to teach them the same things with puppies. So about being gentle, about not bothering them when they are eating or when they are sleeping, etc. Uh, but what you might find with adult dogs in particular, particular adult dogs that have a history with children, um, is that they are unlikely to retaliate even if they were bothered by these things. Um, this is because adult dogs have been socialized, particularly the ones with children, they kind of know what they're getting into, they know that children poke and children pull and things like that. Um, 
So with my dog Blue that I mentioned before, um, if a toddler was to pull her ears or poke her bum or anything like that, um, she wouldn't bite them, she wouldn't retaliate with them. She's a very naturally gentle dog and adult dogs who have been socialized well will be like that. They will be, um, they will be a bit more patient. Uh, than a puppy will be that hasn't been socialized. So that's something to note. A big part of pairing a dog and your children is to really teach your children how to look after a dog, you know, make sure that your children are part of the daily care of your dog and so that they build that bond, but also so your child can build that sense of responsibility. That was one of the that's one of the best ways to teach them how to care for another being. Um, dogs tend to be very patient, very loving, and very friendly with children. So in general, there's not a whole lot to worry about, but it is important that you are teaching your children how to approach a dog well, so that you can avoid any disasters. Quick note on troubleshooting. So let's say that you've brought home a puppy or you've brought home an adult dog, but this tends to be more common with puppies, I'd say. Um, so let's say that you've brought home a dog and your kids and your dog are just not getting along or rather the dog is being a bit aggressive with the kids. I recommend that you go to a dog behaviorist or a dog trainer or your vet and speak to them about potential solutions about as to what's going on in your home. If your dog crosses the line and or they attack your child and of course separate the dog and your children. It's important that you keep your children safe and it's also important that the dog is somewhere that they feel comfortable. So please, please ask for the advice of a dog trainer or a vet. You can also ask the advice of a rescue shelter um, if, if you are having recurring problems with your children and your dog. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you liked this video, then you'll really like this one. I've been Olivia DeSantos for the Gentle Dog Trainers channel and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.